Okay, so hello and good afternoon class. For today's meeting, we will just be discussing about reinforced concrete columns. So today's meeting might be the easiest topic that we will ever have in reinforced concrete design. So ulitin ko lang, ito na ata yung pinakamadaling topic in reinforced concrete. I mean, yes, in the, the design of reinforced concrete. Okay, so once again, we would be discussing about reinforced concrete columns. And for starters, when you say column, a column is a member in a structural frame that transmits the loads towards the footing. So let's say that this is to be your um, I mean reinforced. Let's say that this is to be your structural frame. The use of your columns is for it to transfer the loads from your beams. So let's say that you have your slabs here. Then from the slab from the slabs, I should say, it would transfer the loads onto the beams, and from the beams, it would transfer the loads onto your columns. Then from your columns, it would now transfer the loads towards your footing and ultimately towards earth. But confirmation first, everyone. Um, do you see a figure? Of um a structural frame, I should say. Meron ba? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So once again, that is to be the use of your columns. And with that, guys, well, so if that is to be the case, I should say, then we can safely say that your columns, so for your columns, they are compressive members. So they are mainly, so mainly compression members. So when you say compression members, these are your members that are subject to compressive stress. And when we say compressive stress in Filipino, yun yung naiipit. So naiipit siya. Okay, so when we are to design a certain structural member, the first thing that we should take into consideration is the manner in which that certain structural member will fail. Then after knowing the manner of failure, you must then design your structure in order for it not to fail in the manner that you have anticipated. So, ano nga ba yung mga failures in, ng columns natin? So, what are to be the failures of your columns? They are to be the following. So, it may be your crushing failure or your buckling failure. But when does this happen? So, we would be having two types of our columns. And those types are to be your short column and your long column. And for your long column, it is otherwise known as your slender column. So by this time, you have already um, designed your compressive um, members in steel design. Tama ba? So guys, can I get a confirmation? Nag-design na kayo ng compressive members in your steel design subject. Am I right? Guys? Tama? Mali. Tama? Mali. Guys, salita. Oh, Mr. Abdon, nag-design na kayo ng compressive members sa, ano, sa steel design nyo? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Okay, so with that, guys, you are already familiar with the terms short column and slender column. And they are to be dependent upon the slenderness ratio. So if you can remember, your slenderness ratio is actually KL over R, where L is to be the effective length, K is to be your factor, and R is to be your radius of duration. So madami tayong ways para malaman natin if your column is to be short, or if it is to be long. So in here, guys, the length divided by least dimension is to be less than 12. I mean, if this is to be the case, then of course, short column siya. And if not, then meaning it is to be a long column and etc. So for your short column, guys, its failure is to be by crushing. And as for your long column, its failure is to be by buckling. Thus, this slide here. Okay, so if lakihan ko yung pagmumukha ko dito, so lagay natin, so zoom in natin ngayon. So for example, that this is to be your structural element or a structural member. Guys, do you see what I am holding? Yes, sir. Okay, so ang tawag dito, ruler, kung di pa kayo nakakita. So ruler ang tawag dito. So for example, now this is to be a structural member. And let's say that this structural member is a compressive member. So kapag iipitin ko siya, Gaganito siya. Kung nakita nyo man yung nangyari, kapag hindi, pakitignan na lang yung screen nyo. So this manner here, or this manner of failure, is what you would be calling your buckling. Thus, if you would be looking once again to our slide, so eto siya. So buckling failure, so nagbend siya in this particular manner. Okay, so once again, this is to be 
um, I mean, this manner of failure is what you would be calling your buckling. So, kailan ba nangyayari ang buckling? So, buckling happens when your uh, member or your compressive member is a slender element. And as you can see, that your ruler along this axis, it is very slender. So, alam nyo yung slender, guys. Um, payat siya and... Ayun, ano ba yung definition natin ng slender in Google? So, I would just be googling the term slender. So, according to the dictionary or according to Google, when you say slender, it is gracefully thin. Uy, graceful pa. Okay, anyway, so it is very thin. So, ito thin siya. Ito, kaya siya magbabakal ng ganito. Okay, so going back here, that is to be one failure for your column. So, another failure is to be for your crushing failure. And your crushing failure happens when you would be having a column or a certain structural member that is short. So, ma meaning, medyo mataas yung, I mean, medyo mababa yung slenderness ratio niya. So, hindi siya slender. So, if I am to compare this ruler, so if I am to compare this ruler as a structural member to this, let's say, ito, meron akong battery. So, kapag i-compare niya sila, ito, payat, payat siya, then mahaba. Then, you also have your battery. E yung battery, maliit siya, it is compact. And it is to be uh, thicker than that of your column. I mean, column toloy of your ruler. So if I am to um, compress this, so if I am to subject this battery to a very uh, strong compressive stress, its manner of failure is that, well, hindi siya malulubat. Ang mangyayari dito is magka-crush siya. So hindi ko lang maipakita kasi hindi ako ganun kalakas. But if you would be imagining here, guys, so if this is to be, um, it's failure. So, for example, ito yung ano natin, yung structural element natin or a structural member. This is what you would be calling your crushing failure. So, guys, can you see? Um, nakikita ba kung anong, I mean, yung manner of failure, guys? Yes, sir. Okay, so that is to be for your crushing. So, as you can see, as compared with the photo on your lower right, hindi siya nagbuckle. So, lahat sila, I mean, lahat ng steel rebars mo, nag-bend sila palabas. And as for your slender element, so for your slender element, which is to be this, so this is to be for your buckling, it only bended along one direction. So whatever that direction is, or basta yun, yun yung main aspect ng ating, um, I mean yung main failure ng ating short column and ng slender column. Okay, so once again, if you are to design a certain structural member, so if you are to be designing a certain short column, you must then design it in a way that it would not fail in this particular man manner. Manner, I should I should say. So ito, so it should not fail in this manner. So design yun na ng ganyan. Okay, so moving forward, no. aside from your buckling failure and your crushing failure, you also have your shear failure. And yun, for your shear failure, this only happens if you would be having a certain short column. So kapag may short column ka, then it is to be subjected with a tremendous. So di ko lang kung tama yung adjective ko. But if it is to be subjected with a very strong lateral load, let's say your earthquake or let's say a wind load that is very strong. With such guys, it would now um, fill in shear. However, guys, in actual practices, this rarely happens. So, this rarely happens, guys. Anyway, okay. So, let's move forward. So, we have provisions in the NSCP. So, guys, can I get a confirmation? Nababasa ba? So, um, is, I mean, are the words in this slide readable? Guys, are they? Yes. Okay, very good. How about for the others? Okay lang? Nababasa? Before we proceed? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Okay, so we have here your ties. So your ties is to be your lateral um, reinforcement, guys. So if you would be going back here, so your lateral ties are to be your, well, basically this ties. So itong mga rivers na to, so they are to be the transverse um, reinforcement. So it is very similar to your stirrups, no? So stirrups is for beams, so stirrups are for beams and ties are for 
columns. Okay, so moving forward, so unlike in your uh, beam design, dito napakadali mag-design ng ties. Okay, so in here guys, the clear spacing should be at least 4 thirds um, the diameter of the aggregates or, or our MSA. So for example, that in your reinforced concrete, ang ginamit yung um, bato is let's say 3 fourths mm, I mean 3 fourths inches. So with that guys, the clear spacing of it must be 4 thirds um, the MSA. So yun lang yan. Basta dapat magkasya, dapat magkasya yung ano, magkasya yung bato kapag magbubuhos na kayo. Kasi for example, that for your column, so let's say that this is to be your column, then yung spacing nila, so for example, that this is are to be your shear reinforcement, or I mean your transverse re reinforcement, so let's say that it is very close to one, to each other, and let's say that it is to be, uh, so the spacing is to be less than 4 thirds M S A. So with that guys, if you would be pouring your concrete, hindi magkakasya yung mga bato-bato nyo dito. So guys, do you understand the aspect? So do you understand the main idea yes, here? Sir. Okay, very good. Okay, so yun lang naman siya guys. Napakadali. Okay, so moving forward, the center to center space spacing. The center to center spacing shall not exceed the list of 16 bar diameter of the longitudinal bar or 48 dB of the tie bar and the smallest dimension of the member. So yan, self-explanatory. So let's say that we would but ko pa dinelete yung drawing ko kanina. So once again, this is to be your column and let's say that these are to be your ties. So ito yung tie natin. I mean ties natin. I'm sorry if may tabing isa. Okay, so the center to center spacing shall not be um 16 dB. I mean sh shall not exceed. I'm sorry nabubulol. Ganun daw talaga pag guwapo ay nabubulol de joke lang. So it must not exceed. So with that guys, it must be less than 16 bar diameter but this bar diameter is for your longitudinal members so longitudinal so when i say longitudinal these are to be this green uh, members so of course if this is to be your column you would be having your rebars along this direction so ayan and with that that is to be this db so yun yun guys so 16 db and another thing, it must be uh, less than 48 dB, but this dB here should be of your tie bar. So with that, guys, it must be less than 48 dB, but this dB should be the bar diameter of your lateral ties. So guys, magkaiba ang longitudinal and ang lateral. So guys, do you understand, before I proceed, the difference of this dB here and this dB here? Guys, confirmation. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Very good. How about for the others? Understood? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Okay. Yes, so, thank you for your responses. Anyway, so ayun nga yung ating ties. Okay, so for your diameter of tie bar, it should be the following. So this is to be the minimum bar diameter if you would be enclosing 32 mm diameter and below longitudinal bars. So what that means is that, for example, that your rebars here, so for your longitudinal bar, so dB, let's say, is to be equal to 32 millimeters and below. The minimum bar diameter that you can use for your uh, transverse reinforcement must be equal to 10 mm. So guys, minimum to. So you can go up actually. But in my case guys, in um, in my experience, I should say, this is already enough. So ayun, mas makatipid naman na kayo kapag 10mm na gagamitin nyo. Okay, so moving forward, so it is also said here that for 36mm, so for bar diameter equal to 36mm and above, and okay, so end and above, it means that your DB for your lateral tie, so lagyan ko na lang ng ano dito, ng tawag dito, ng subscript, so LT, 
So for your lateral thighs, this should be 12 mm and above. So sinasabi ko sa inyo na napakadali ng module na to. I mean, ng topic na to. So puro memorization. So you can just memorize this and this, which is very basic. And as for the layouting of your thighs, no guys? So for your thighs, this is what it would look like. Teka, lakihan natin. So let us increase the size here. So let's say that these are to be the arrangement of your ties. Okay, so in common practices, it would just look like this or this. So puro may square lang siya, no? But in some cases, you must also provide um, ties here. So you must also provide ties here. So when is it to be the case that you will be providing these ties? So maglalagay ka lang ng ganyan ties. If the spacing or the SC, so yung SC natin, anong nangyayari? Ba't nawawala yung sinusulat ko? So for your SC, this is to be for the um, clear concrete spacing. So with that guys, yung, ano, yung clear spacing ng per rebar. If it is to be um, greater than 150 mm. So this is to be the time wherein you must provide these ties. So kapag yung spacing nila, it is to be less than um, 150 mm, hindi nyo na kailangan maglagay ng lateral ties ng ganito. And ayun, kapag oo, kapag mas mataas yung spacing niya sa 150 mm, saka ka maglalagay. So guys, before I proceed, naintindihan yun or do you need me to repeat it? Yung sa paglagay natin ng mga lateral ties sa gitna, sa mga legs niya. Guys, confirmation o Mr. Miraflor, did you understand or do I need to repeat? Kelvin. Understood. Okay, very good. How about for uh, Mr. Choi? Understood? Okay lang po, sir. Okay, very good. Mr. Runes. Understood? Mr. Runes. Understood? Okay, okay mukhang wala siya. How about for Mr. Nidad? Understood? Ayun, meron pa yes, si Mr. Runes. Okay. So, ayan. So, very good. And proceed na din tayo. So ulitin ko lang, in Filipino, maglalagay lang tayo ng mga ganitong legs ng ating lateral ties if yung spacing nila is to be greater than 150 mm already. Okay. So, moving forward. So, ayun pala guys. So ano bang gamit netong ties na to? So, one use of your ties, so one use, is for shear reinforcement. So, shear reinforcement but what if let's say that your column it would not undergo shear so um may meron ba tayong ganong example so actually totoo meron so let's say that you would be having a certain short column so for your short column if you can remember this is to be i mean its manner of failure is to be by crushing so ayun and let's say that the load is concentric so, concentric loading. So, when we say concentric loading, it means that the load here, so let's say that this P, U, so for the load P, U, it acts directly at the center of the section. So, hindi siya tabingi, I mean, hindi siya gumilid ng onte exactly at the middle. So, with that, guys, there is to be no presence of moment. And, Another thing, of course, speaking about moments, so kapag may ganitong moment, hindi na siya um, concentric. So alisin na natin yung moment na ganyan kapag ganun. I mean, hindi na siya concentric kapag mayroong moment. So alisin natin yung moment na yan para maging concentric. And if this is to be the case, guys, if you can see, there are no ways for your, um, uh, for your column to withstand shear. So kapag ganun, guys, wala na siyang shear. And for example, wala din siya ng ano dito. Wala din siyang lateral load. So kapag walang lateral load, guys, ulitin ko lang, concentric siya and it is not to be subjected with shear. So if that is to be the case, if you would be going back here, ang tanong, if this is for your shear reinforcement or the lateral ties, kapag concentric ba? If it is to be concentric, do we still need to provide lateral ties? So the short answer to that, yes, we still need to uh, provide lateral ties. So what is to be the use of your lateral ties if there is to be no presence of let's say your um shear so the second um the second use of your um lateral ties is for 
it. I mean, for, well, actually, for the lateral ties to hold the lateral bars, I mean, the longitudinal bars, in place. Teka, sulat ko lang yan. In place. Okay, so if you would be going back, I mean, if you would be going to this slide here, of course, if you would be um, having a certain reinforced concrete column, it would still, I mean, it would have to go concrete pouring. And during concrete pouring, there might be some cases wherein if you are to be filling your formworks with concrete, the steel might be misaligned. So, maaring tumabingi yung ibang steel rebars nyo if wala kayong lateral ties. So, with that guys, yun yung isang gamit ng lateral ties para hindi siya gumilid and for it to hold the steel into place during concrete pouring. So guys, understood? Malinaw yun? Guys? Okay, very good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so ayun. Yun lang yung gamit niya if, ano, if walang lateral loads. And speaking about concentric load, I mean, concentrically loaded columns, which are short, so yun yung actually yung pag-aaralan natin mamaya. So this is to be our computation part later on. Okay, so going back here, so we also have our reinforcement limit. So for our reinforcement limit, it I mean the area for longitudinal reinforcement, so let's say that that is to be your area of the steel, it should be at least 0.01 AG. So equal to 0.01 AG, but shall not exceed 0.08 AG. So AST, teka, mali yung equation ko. So AST should, must I mean, must be greater than 0.01 AG and it must be less than or equal to 0.08 AG. Teka, less than, I mean, greater than or equal to that. So if you would be manipulating this equation, so mag-transpose, transpose tayo, we can actually, teka, lagay ko lang muna dito para dito tayo mag-focus sa isa. This is to be, so I would be dividing both sides by AG. So AG, so AG would cancel out, then ito AG. So what this means is that the area of the steel divided by gr the gross sectional area, this must be greater than or equal to 0 0.01. And if you can remember from before, AST divided by AG, this is actually your steel ratio. So steel ratio. So ayan na yun, basically. So ito na yung minimum na steel ratio. So if I am to interpret this code, mas maiintindihan nyo if we would just be um, writing it this way. So, the maximum steel ratio, so maximum steel ratio is equal to 0 0.08 or we can also write it as so row max is to be equal to 8%. Then for your row minimum, so row minimum, that is to be 0 0.01. And ayun, we can also write it as 1%. So, ito lang yun guys. Iniba ko lang yung equation but it is basically the same. So guys, pakimemorize to. So this wouldn't change unless it is to be changed in the NSCP. So for example, in the next edition of our National Structural Code of the Philippines, if palitan nila, edi palitan nila. But if not, just memorize these factors. So Romax, 8%. And your row minimum, 1%. Guys, understood? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So, yan, memorize. And we also have this provision, guys. So, it must at least have, or your column must at least, at least have 4 bars in tied columns and 6 bars in spiral columns. So, okay. So, ano nga ba itong spiral columns? So, what is to be its different, I mean, its difference from the tied columns. So, in the next slide, this is to be the difference of your spiral column and your tied column or your laterally tied column. So, this one um, marked in green, they are to be your um, tied column. And the one marked in red is to be your spiral column. So, B. Spiral column. Okay, so as you can see, um, in 
Ayun, as you can see, their difference is very self-explanatory already, especially in this left figure. So sa lateral ties, ganito yung reinforcement niya laterally. And for your spiral ties, the um, shear reinforcement of it is to be helical in nature or spiral. Thus, spiral column. So ayun lang yan, guys. So, ayun, ano pa bang sasabihin ko dito? Guys, nakikita nyo naman kung anong difference, no? Ng tied column and ng spiral column. In the figure, guys, malinaw naman, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Oh, Mr. Choi. Uh, sir, question po. Pag Go. structural integrity, ano pong mas matibay sa dalawa? Yung ganyang circular section or rectangular? Okay, so ano, kapag same sila ng cross-sectional area, so oh, so same cross-sectional area na ginamit and same na uh, rebars na ginamit, same grade, mas matibay ang spiral column. So, spiral column would be the much stronger um, choice as compared with this if they have the same properties. So, let's say, same yung, ano nila, same yung um, cross-sectional area nila, same yung bakal na ginamit. Okay, so, very good question. So, with that question, lagyan natin ngayon ng, ano, lagyan natin ngayon ng computation. Okay, so, for your PO, so, ganun, no? Meron kasi tayong tinatawag na Maximum compressive axial load. So, this is to back up the question by Mr. Choi, no? So, meron tayong tinatawag na maximum compressive axial load. So, you can either memorize this formula and pwede din namang hindi. So, mas magandang hindi na lang as long as you know strength of materials or the mechanics of deformable bodies. So, your PO, so, lagay ko lang saan ba tayo pwede magsulat. For your PO, this is basically PC plus PS. So, ano yung PC? So, PC is to be the strength. So, strength of your concrete. And PS is to be for the strength of your steel. So, steel rebars. So, sinasabi ko sa inyo, napakadali na ito. So, let's say that you would be having a certain section. So, let's say meron kayong Teka, ayoko mag-drawing. Mapahiya akong di oras. Ito na lang. So, copy ko lang ito sandali. So, let's say that you have this um, section here. And in this section, guys, so, ito. ito dito mo tayo mag-focus sa nasa left. So, meron kayong concrete. Then, meron din kayong rebar. So, ayan. So, meron kayong concrete, meron kayong rebar. And how can you solve for the strength of the concrete? So, PO, that is to be equal to. So, PC, so if you can remember for your concrete, we are to assume that uh, the maximum load that a concrete can withstand is to be 0.85 F prime C. So, ito yung ginagamit natin sa beams before. But this is to be in terms of megapascal. So, what we will be doing now is just that we will be multiplying this by the area of the concrete. So, yan lang yan. Yan yung PC. And as for your PS, so for your PS, this is to be the area of the steel times, um, teka, para lang, pas, ano, para lang mas consistent, unahin natin yung FY. FY times the area of the steel. So, basically, this is to be the maximum compressive load that a concrete can carry. So, kahit ano ba yan, kahit laterally tied man yan, o kahit spiral man yan, ganyan yung PO niya. Pero may catch tayo mamaya. So, bago natin, I mean, bago ko mag-proceed sa catch, isimplify muna natin tong equation na to. So, PO is to be equal to 0.85 F prime C times AC. So, guys, ano ba yung AC natin? What is to be the area of the concrete? If let's say that this is to be the section of your concrete. So, ito nasa left na lang muna para mas maayos. So, ano yung area ng concrete dito? So, napakasimple niyan guys. That is to be the gross sectional area. Teka, ano nangyari dito sa ano ko? Sa pinagsusulat ko. Okay, so anyway, that is to be the gross sectional area. So, when we say gross sectional area, that is to be the whole area. So, gross sectional area, lahat ng yan. Minus... The area of the steel. So that is basically the area of the concrete. Guys, in, understood kung saan nanggaling itong equation na to? 
Yes, sir. Okay, very good. How about for the others? Understood kung saan nanggaling itong equation na to? Yes. Okay, very good. So, ayan. So, with that, guys, we can rewrite this as AG minus AST. So, for your AST, napakasimple niyan. That is to be pi over 4 times db squared times the number of rebars. Alam nyo na to. Basta that is to be the total area of your steel rebars. Okay, so plus Fy AST. So this is to be the maximum compressive load that a certain column can carry. So guys, take note pala itong equation na to is for short concentric columns only. And as for the others, tsaka na natin pag-usapan yan. Okay, so ayun, so I will just be copying this to our previous slide para mas mai ano ko mai pakita ko kung anong difference nila palitin na natin to and palitin din natin to then taas natin tong mga source ko oops may sumama oops sorry teka lang so ayun ulitin ko lang guys this is to be your equation regardless if it is spiral or tied so, the question is, so, ang sagot ko kanina sa question ni Mr. Choi, mas matibay ang spiral column. So, paano ba natin siya consider dito? Okay, so once again, this is just to be for the maximum compressive steel. I mean, compressive uh, load that it can carry. But what about for the PN? So, PN is to be for the nominal force. So, PN is basically equal to, so for laterally tied, teka, i-differentiate natin. For lateral tide, so lateral ties. Then let's say dun sa right natin, this is to be for your spiral. So ito, ito yung division line natin. So, saan sila nagkaiba? So ulitin ko lang, ito yung equation natin. No? Pero saan nga ba sila nagkaiba? So for your lateral ties, for your PN or the nom nominal strength of it, this is to be equal to, so check ko lang ko yung yung aking um, book para di ako mapahiya ng di oras. But pamaya, bak, maiba ko na naman yung isulat ko. Eh. Okay, so ayun. So this is to be 0 0.8 PO. So 80% lang ng PO, yan yung magiging strength natin if lateral tide yan. And as for your spiral, so your PN, this is to be equal to 85% of your PN. So, and guys, if you would be making use of spiral, ito pala, if you would be making use of spiral, as you can see, 85% yung ginamit niya. So, yan daw yung strength ng spiral, I mean, yung nominal strength ng spiral reinforced concrete column. So, mas malakas siya, 85%. And, saan ba nang galing yung 85% na yan? So, it was um, derived with, I mean, from a series of experiments. So, pinag-experimentan nila kung anong mas matibay, kung laterally tied ba or spiral. And sa spiral, I mean, spiral nga yung mas matibay, thus, 85% yung ginamit sa spiral, while 80% lang yung sa tied reinforcement. Okay, so, if you can remember, PN, so nominal yan, but what about for the design uh, strength? So, for the design strength, ang mangyayari lang naman dyan is you would be multiplying your PN, I mean, you would be multiplying your PN by the reduction factor phi. So, phi PN lang naman yan. So, phi, teka, phi PN, and of course, phi PN. So, may pinagkaiba nga na naman ba yung ano, yung sa value nila ng phi? So, the short answer to that is yes, may pinagkaiba yung um, value natin ng phi. And for your phi here, so yung gamit natin sa lateral ties, our phi here is to be equal to um, 65%. So, 0.65. And as for our spiral, yung phi natin dito, this is to be equal to 0.75. So, nasa code to actually. Hindi ko lang na-copy-paste, pero nasa page. Teka, nawala yung sa libro ko. Basta nasa code to guys. Sa lateral ties, 0 0.65 yung phi. And sa spiral, 0.75 yung phi. So with that guys, this is basically equal to, so kapag lateral ties, PPN is to be equal to um, 
0 0.65 times 0 0.8 times PO. So yan, tandaan nyo na lang to. Then for your VPN, that is to be 0 0.75 times 0 0.85 times PO. So, I'm sorry guys, PO to dito PN. So, PO. So, guys, ito. Memorization. Napakadali niyan. So, guys, understood? Now, Mr. Choi, naintindihan? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Okay, so let's have an example. So, ulitin ko lang, napakadali lang na ito. So, let us have here an example, no? So, let us determine the maximum design actual strength of a 60, I mean, 600 mm diameter column with 8 pieces, 28 mm DFB. So when we say DFB, this stands for deformed bars. So when we say deformed bars, these are to be the bars that has their own ribs. So ito, kapag itong mga ribbars mo na to, yung medyo may corrugation siya sa gilid. Teka, ano ba example natin dito? So, hindi lang kita, no? But in most cases, guys, deformed bars yung ginagamit. Teka, for you, just for you to see. Mag-search lang ako ng deformed bar. And anong pinagkaiba niya sa plain round bar? So, okay. So, in most cases, the nut, ito yung madalas yung nakita. So, this is to be a deformed bar. So, ito yung deformed bar natin. And for your, um, what you call this, plain round bar, so as per the name itself, say, it is to be plain. So, makinis siya, guys. Nagko-collagen and whatnot. De joke lang. Basta ma mas makinis yung texture ng, ano, ng plain round bar. And in reinforced concrete structures, we must use deformed bars, of course. So, ayun. Teka, I delete ko na itong dalawa. Okay. So, it's, I mean, it's F prime C is to be 28,000 kilopascal. So, basically, this is just 28 megapascal. Convert nyo lang. And for your FY, that is to be 420 MPA. Okay, so for the, the determination of the maximum design strength, that is to be P, P, N. So ito lang talaga yung unknown natin, no? So guys, do you agree? So maximum design. So design actual strength, that is to be P, P, N. So when you say nominal actual strength, P, N lang dapat yon. So guys, agree? Do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. How about for the others? So, Chandni, ikaw, do you agree? Yes, sir. Okay, sige. So, ayan. So, once again, ba't ko pa in -erase? Our requirement here is to be the value for your VPN. Okay, so if you would be going back here, anong formula ngayon gagamitin natin? So, must it be laterally tied or spiral? Though hindi sinabi sa problem, okay, so it is not indicated in the problem, but it is said here that our column is to be circular. Though it is, once again, it is not said that it is circular, but the given here is to be your diameter. So when you say diameter, it is automatically circular. So the question is, when you say that you would be having a circular column, is it automatically uh, given that it is to be spiral reinforced? So um, the short answer to that, no. So there are still um, circular columns that has lateral ties that are um, circle. So pwede pa rin. Pwede pa rin circle siya. It can be circle but yung, what you call this, itong lateral ties niya, ties pa rin, hindi spiral. So pwede pa rin yun. However, by default, guys, so by default, they must be spiral by default. And since it is not indicated here, we will be assuming that it is to be spiral reinforced. So, yun yung default ng mga circle. So, with that, spiral. So, ayon. So, for our strength here. So, for the value for your phi, pn. So, phi, pn is to be equal to. So, what is to be the value for your phi? So, this is to be 0 0.75. So, ito kapag spiral. Pero, teka, bago ang lahat, pn muna isolve natin. So, for the value for your PN, that is to be equal to 85%, so 0 0.85 of our PO. And yung PO natin kanina, that basically is the area of, I mean, um, the strength of the concrete plus the strength of the uh, steel. 
So with that, ito yung sa stress ng steel, ay sa stress ng column, 0.85 times F prime C and F prime C natin is to be 28. So ito, that is to be the stress multiplied by the gross sectional area. So gross sectional area, that is to be pi over 4. So what is to be the area of a 600 mm diameter column? So that is to be pi over 4 times 600 squared. So AG to, ngayon kung ito, for example nga yung concrete column natin, then meron tayong mga steel rebars dito and in our example that is to be 8 pieces. So I'm sorry about my presentation, it is very hard to draw digitally. So for example that this is to be your column. So we are only concerned with this shaded area. So hindi dapat kasama yung sa steel. So with that we will be um, deducting, we will now be subtracting the total area of the steel rebars. And since we have 8 pieces, so we would be multiplying this by 8. So 8 times pi over 4 times 28 squared. So this is the, to be the total steel area. So guys, do you agree? So guys, ano, uh, malinaw ba? Mistaya ba? Malinaw naman to? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So that is for this. So, yan yung sa ano pa lang yan, sa concrete pa lang yan. But what about for steel? So, for steel, that is very basic. So, plus Fy times AST. So, for our Fy, that is to be um, 420 megapascal. So, it is already given here. So, 420 megapascal times the area of the steel. Teka, yan ko nga lang muna ipakita. Sorry. Pakita ko nga lang muna sa inyo to. So, ngayon, Nangyari. So now, ang concern lang naman natin for the next part of the equation is just the steel. So ito mga blue marks lang na to. So wala ngayon tayong kinalaman. I mean, wala tayong paki ngayon sa concrete. So yung steel lang. So plus, what is to be the area? I mean, the total area of the steel rebar. So that is to be 8 times. So 8 pieces times pi over 4 times 28 squared. So with that, Ito, area pa lang to. So, we would now be multiplying it by the strength of the rebar. So, 420 megapascal. Okay. So, with that, the value for our PN. So, guys, I would appreciate if you would be um, getting your calculators with you para if ever maliman yung pindot ko, meron tayong backup. So, you can uh, tell me if my answers are, I mean, if my answer is wrong. So, looking at the calculator to your left, or better yet, looking at your calculator, just solve with me. So, this is to be 85% of, so, teka, naghang, ayaw. Okay, so, 85% of um, 0.85 times 28 times um, pi divided by 4 times 600 squared minus 8 times pi divided by 4 times 28 squared. Saan yung square dito? 28 squared. Closed parenthesis. Plus 8 over 4 times pi times 28 squared times 420. So can you guys check if parehas tayo ng sagot? Teka, check ko muna kung tama yung pagkaka-group ko ng mga variables. Okay, so I'm I think tama naman. Okay, guys. So my answer here is to be 7378832.584 newtons. So guys, do we have the same answer? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So, for us to convert this into kilonewtons, so convert natin into kilonewtons by just dividing this by 1,000. So, divide natin by 1,000. So, this is now, I mean, our nominal strength of our section is to be 7378.833 kilonewtons. So, eto. So, ang tanong pala dito, guys, remind ko lang, design actual strength. So, ayun, if this is to be the design actual strength, ito nominal pa lang to. So, for design actual strength, 
just multiply your answer by the value for your fee. So fee, P, N. So that is to be equal to. So what is to be the fee for your spiral? So 0 0.75. So 0 0.75 times 7378.833 kilonewtons. So this is now to be equal to. So times 0 0.75. So five five so I'm sorry five five three four point one two four kilo newton. So this is to be the design actual strength of this particular section. Just take note guys that this section is to be um to call that a short concentric column. So for example that in your board exams ang sabi niya don short concentric columns so Parang bonus point na yan. Ganito lang yung gagawin nyo. So, this is to be um, the, what you call this? This is to be the design actual strength already. But if it is to be a design problem, so same process, it's just that it, I mean, the given is to be the one unknown. And medyo wala na tayong time, so let us continue with this next meeting or bit, or maybe I would just be giving it to you as an assignment. Pero ulitin ko lang, same approach. It's just that it's it is just that the givens would be unknown. So I, before I proceed, pala or before I end the meeting, Roxanne, para sa ng sagot yung VPN. Yes, sir. Okay, how about for the others? Sa mga nagsolve, guys, sino pa yung kaparehas ko ng sagot? Click nyo lang na lang yung raise hand button para makita ko if ever. Okay, mukhang si Mr. Trinidad lang yung nag-solve. Anyway, so I am assuming tama to. So may kaparehas ako ng answer. And same din daw kay Miss Akop. So about for the others, guys, same ba? O yun, kay Rowela, same din ata. O kay Wilmel, same. And for the others. Okay, so that's it for our meeting for today, no? So if you would be, I mean, if you want to have um high grades, syempre patusin nyo na itong mga requirements natin about concentrically loaded columns. So, ayun. So, are there questions, guys? Okay. So, if there are no more questions, so, I will be ending the recording first. So, yan na yung answer muna natin ngayon.